Okay, we're live. Yep. All the meetings over. stress and emotion. We were faced with, we were all faced with what seemed like nothing but bad choices. <clears throat> the situation was and is very frustrating. Frustrating. Sometimes I get frustrated. I speak emphatically and overly uh, passionate. And although I stand behind my vote and my position, the importance to get back to school, my delivery, my message, as it related to the teachers was harsh and disrespectful. Many of you are my friends. I know you very well, and I know that you want to get back to school just as much as everybody else. I let my frustration, my situation, of the situation, and my fear for the public school, uh, for the fear of public education get the best of me. I spun a narrative I pretty much blame the teachers for having to go to four weeks online learning to start school. The way I delivered that was insulting, disrespectful, and accusatory. For all that, I'm very sorry. I'm very sad myself. Hope you forgive me. We'll get back to doing what y'all came here to do. Teach kids. I'm truly sorry, teachers. I was uh, not nice to you last week, and I'm sorry. I thank you for that. I'm going to ask Emily Vassilin, girls soccer. Yeah, you want to come? Good evening. I'm Emily Vassar. This is Abby Twenty, Kenzie Rook, and we're the captains of the girls' girls' soccer varsity team. And we just wanted to thank you for letting us continue our fall season. We appreciate everything you're doing to keep us safe. We will continue to take our guidelines seriously and follow social distancing. We've been trying to do a very good job of that so far, and I think we have. And soccer is very important to the three of us and our whole team. I'm sure other sports feel the same way about theirs. I'm sure that they're very appreciative of, the, of you letting them keep their sports as well as we are. And we're glad we get a chance to play. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to play. I, I want to thank everybody for, first of all, coming out tonight. It's a larger crowd than normal, and that's always a good thing. Bear with us. This this is a we're kind of out of our element because I'm out of the pulpit. So just bear with us as we move through this meeting. 
The next person that uh, has signed up to speak is Jeff Blunt, teachers, teachers union rep. First of all, we would like to thank you for supporting the superintendent's plan that was passed last week. We know it was a difficult decision. Like board member Ruskin said, damned if you do, damned if you don't. We, however, would like to clear up a few misconceptions about the statements made during the board meeting. It was implied that the teachers didn't want to go back to the classroom. This is not true. Griffith teachers know the best place for our students is in the classroom. We simply want a safe working environment for students and teachers. We need enough PPE and space for social distancing as recommended by health experts. This is Ryan indicated during her opening statement last week <clears throat> that much of the necessary PPE is not available and or in our schools yet. To compare your teachers to nurses, doctors, and frontline workers is just wrong. People in those professions knew the health risks when they signed up for their positions. Teachers sign up to educate children. Yes, that in itself has risks, but not potential deadly health risks like we see today, the pandemic we are facing. There are different levels of safety and risk. <clears throat> Walking into a classroom of 25 to 30 plus students during a pandemic without proper PPE or room to social distance for six plus hours is a health risk for all students and staff. The lack of PPE and ability to social distance to recommend six feet in the classroom were two of the determining factors for teachers wanting to open up the school year virtual. It is not because we were scared. We just want to be sure we're protecting our students and staff to the best of our ability. Griffin teachers have been tirelessly working on their unpaid time, trying to learn our new technology so that we can be the best teachers for our students. Many are doing this while packing up their classrooms and unpacking into their new buildings, also on their unpaid time. Many teachers have participated in Schoology, Pat Hammer, live streaming, Nearpod, and Ed Puzzle trainings. Many of these trainings have come over the last three or four weeks, but the main one focusing on our new learning management system has only been helpful to get secondary teachers acquainted <clears throat> to the functionality of the interface. Elementary teachers have been given access to their classes in Schoology, but secondary teachers cannot build their own courses because they have not been given their teaching assignments yet. However, we have been working diligently on the practice material courses, which the technology department has graciously created for us. We are also unsure of the new block scheduling layout for this year, which makes it difficult to plan lessons without knowing how long classes will be. These were some of the other reasons we supported this is right. This is Reese's plan to delay the start of the school year. When you stated that the board is giving us time to figure it out, be assured we are doing exactly that on our own time. We do this because we are educators that care about our kids. We are confident as teachers that we can prepare the best instruction possible, whether the students are learning virtually or in person. In conclusion, once we have all the safety measures put in place and are prepared to follow the guidelines from our health department, we are all prepared and ready to begin in-person instruction. To say that we are more than excited to have the kids back with us is an understatement. Again, we acknowledge the pressure that you are under, but please don't dismiss the pressure that your teachers are under as well. We also like to thank the certified staff for all the hard work they've been doing and will continue to do to keep us safe. We came to this meeting today to show how important it is that everyone works together more than ever to make this a successful year. Respectfully, Griffith Federation of Teachers. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I'm going to say something here real quick. I said this to some of the administrators and some board members and maybe even 
ันเรียนท่านตรงว่าเออเอ่อ unintended consequences is what's in play here and it's almost brilliant but for the exception that nobody really thought of it I don't think anybody gets to lay claim to it but these four weeks will allow for every parent every student and every teacher to know exactly what the system is all about having brought parents back and families back and some virtual during this period would have been a conundrum or would have created a conundrum when that next lockout happens and it's possible it could this way everybody will know if if something happens in the future and we have the kids have to be removed from the classroom every parent every student and every teacher will know exactly what to do it's a way of teaching and for that I'm very Thank you again. I much appreciate it. Um, at this time, we're going to move to the uh, superintendent update. I'm going to give the floor to Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Jeff, and teachers, uh, for that statement. Um, I do commend you, and you guys have been working tirelessly getting ready, and thank you for that. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my first is a reminder for all parents. Virtual learning begins on Wednesday, August 19th for all grades, grades 3 through 12. And I'll talk about grades pre-K through 2 in just a moment. So please watch out for more information from your building administrator. Next, many of our parents have received training in Schoology. However, there are many who have not learned about Schoology yet. We need for all parents to either attend future training sessions or watch the training video on your own time, as we know that many of you are working. In addition, we need all parents to create their account and would love for you to do so prior to August 19th, which is our first student virtual day. The admin industry team had their training this morning, and I am delighted to see what this, what this program could actually do. And I told Robbie it was the best decision we've made. I will let you know that we've all agreed, the administrative team, that this will be our main source of communication at Griffith Public Schools. It has the capability to do so. However, we can't make it be our main source of communication, which all of us want, until all the parents have their accounts in there, the majority of them in there. So if you have any information um, or have any questions, should I say, please contact the building administrator and or Robbie. Robbie, is there anything else on that end you would like for anyone to know regarding Schoology or training sessions? She's saying no, but she is available by email um, if that would probably be the quickest way to get a hold of her. Also, um, I do my daily check of enrollment at each of our buildings. Right now, we have over 600 students in our system who are pending and have not been approved. Over 600. You may be wondering if your child is one of those students. I would be if I was a parent. If you have not completed the registration process and provided us with the requested documentation, such as like a mortgage or a lease, your child is not registered for school. It has not been placed in a homeroom at the elementary level or courses at the middle school and high school. And high school teachers and middle school teachers, this is the reason why. We do not have our kids enrolled. And so we can't roll it into school yet. So that's part of the reason why we have been unable to get our teachers with that necessary information. We have made multiple attempts to contact parents these last couple of weeks through phone calls, emails, um, and we're just getting voicemails. We are pleading with parents to bring in the necessary documentation and complete the registration process by this Friday so that we can finalize our class lists and schedules and get our teachers what they need so that they can start their Schoology process and finish it so that we can make it live for everybody on August 19th. I will need a firm count to also ensure our staffing needs are being met across the district because 600 students is quite a bit 
and by the loss if that's indeed the amount that's not returning. Therefore, on Monday, August 16th, your child's registration paperwork, if it's not approved, we're delinquent from the system so we can move forward. We had to do this last year and, and it upset quite a few parents, but it turned around, it got them to get this necessary paperwork in that they needed because you have to start the process over again. Parents, you're the holdup. When we ask you to please complete everything, we need it done now so that we can get things moving for our teachers so that they're ready to go on August 19th. So if you have any questions, please contact that building secretary right away. She will be able to assist you. So thank you and please help us out. Also, there's been some confusion. I have some stars here in the, in the audience about the start of school for lots of our students. In an effort to alleviate some of the anxiety and the nervousness of our little ones, and, and our, not only our little ones, but some of the parents too, our lower elementary teachers wanted to personalize the experience by hosting small group sessions with each of our students accompanied by a parent. These sessions were staggered across three days to ensure that we were able to safely host a meaningful experience, which allows for the teacher and the student to meet in person. I apologize for any confusion this may have caused our families, but please know that Mrs. Jaros and her teachers wanted to make sure that we had a plan in place for that meeting to occur. And so that is why we've done it for the three days. So there's been some talk out there on, on social media about, well, what about those kids not attending for the 19th, 20th, and 21st? That is the reason why we need the time for the teachers to meet up with the parent and learn the system together. And the teachers have willingly said that they would sit there and go through that um, with the parent because it is their first experience for most of them. So if you have any questions, I know you can reach out to Mrs. Jaros. She will be happy to help out in any way you can. But thank you lots for teachers. I see some of you out in the audience today. Again, we're trying to make this experience possible for our, parents, our, our kids, and I applaud all of you for doing that. Thank you. Prior to our return to in-person learning, our parents will all receive a survey to once again indicate their choice of how the child will continue to learn after the first four weeks is done. You might be wondering why is Mrs. Reese doing that? You might have a change of heart. I don't know if our COVID cases in the county, we're at an 8% poverty positivity rate right now. I don't know if that will increase or decrease. I want parents to have that option one more time to make that final decision what's going to happen. So you will be receiving communication about this survey um, on Tuesday, September 1st. And we ask that you complete that survey once again, indicating whether you're gonna be in person or continue with the virtual learning. We ask that this survey be completed by September 4th. And I'll get all this communication out and my building principals will help me as well so that we can finalize our plans and move forward. Stay tuned also for date and time for student IDs and wellness kits for those that are returning in person. We're gonna make it a time available that you and your child can pull up, get your student ID, get your wellness kit. Also, we are working on arrangements for those of you that are continuing virtually to gather your books um, that we would have that you might need throughout the year to finish virtually. We will do that as well. But again, uh, please stay tuned for that date and time. Leah, I do believe you have some information um, regarding special ed and title services. So I'm going to hand off the mic to you if you want to come up here. Good evening. Um, so we've been battling with you know, special education and virtual learning for a couple months. and. When it came, came to that decision that said, and I'm looking right at my intensive therapeutic middle school, high school teacher, um, we know for students with an IEP how much more difficult it is to, to attend school virtually. I think that um, our Bennett teachers know it as well, and we acknowledge that. I acknowledge that. 
even more so for those that are in special programs with more limited services. Uh, that being said, the safety of our children, our students, and our teachers have to be more important right now. So uh, I did do an update on virtual learning, it's on the FAQ, and it kind of walks you through what your day would look like. So if your student were to receive services, um, let's say for math or for reading, they would get those same services virtually, so we do home tutoring. Um, so at the elementary level, you would have your ed teacher in the classroom. In addition to that, you would have the special ed teacher in the classroom to provide that support. Um, they can break off in groups virtually, so you can do small groups with the ed teacher has some of the class, and the special ed teacher has another person in that class. Uh, the middle school, high school, they've been home teaching a long time. Um, it'll run the same way, just virtually. Um, as far as related services, it's been a little more tricky. Uh, we do service both non-public schools in Griffith, which means that any student with an IEP attending those non-public schools, we have to provide services uh, for special ed. So I have St. Mary's, and I, the last update was they were going back in person, but they delayed the start until August 31st. Um, Heidi at Christian has a hybrid type model, so that'll be that as well as meet our needs virtually, um, but I, I know that we can do it. We have to be a little more creative and innovative, and some of those services might be outside of the school day. Um, so we will be reaching out to parents within the first 10 days of school, getting those set up with if you're receiving speech, OT or PT, um, as well as behavior therapy. Um, in addition to that, I have 11 district-wide paraprofessionals um, and one job coach. That job coach will be um, we have Mrs. Dippo then providing services to our 18 to 22 year olds. The other 11 paraprofessionals will be set up on uh, a remediation model. Um, that'll be providing additional services and support to students outside of the school day between the hours of 3 and 9 p.m. Um, I know that's kind of late for our little ones, so we'll try to book them early. So if your student has an IEP, one of the paraprofessionals will reach out to them and try to um, provide remediation during that time, in addition to the services outlined in our IEP. Um, our title team is the Rock Stars as well, and they have stepped it up, and they are going to do a standard start. So if your student um, is receiving services from the title department last year, so that would be our most at risk students in the area of math or reading, um, they will have delayed start. So they will be working with our teachers during the school day, but they will also um, provide small group remediation of two or three students between the hours of 5 and 7 p.m. So we're very thankful for that team um, stepping up to do that. Evaluation from last year, um, we did have some carryover evaluations because we couldn't send it all components, obviously, when we were um, going through COVID. So those will be our first priorities and evaluations coming into this year. Um, so those, as well as new evaluations, We'll make appointments to do um, in person evaluation components. Some of them just cannot be done virtually. Um, they would be unethical in some cases. So, if you have a student that's being evaluated, make sure to get those appointments um, and be there so that we can get that done and get the support they need. Did I, did I cover it all? Um, and so, under the special education or exceptional learning tab on the website, you can get more information. If you could Email me if you have any additional questions. I get the finance update, which um, is next. So, um, thank you. <laughs> I'd love to give you the finance update. For the month of July, our revenues were lower than our expenditures by 1.4 billion. This is due to our bond payments made in the month of July. We have 212,000 reimbursable grants that we are waiting on um, the money from the state to deposit that. During a budget finance seminar this week, Larry DeBauer gave us an economic outlook for Indiana in result of the COVID-19 crisis. During his presentation, he talked about the 2021 and 2022 expectations for budgets. 
The state does have a balanced budget for 2020 with about 850 million of balances and 450 million of budget cuts. The revised revenue forecast for 2021 will show large shortfalls. If it's greater than 8 to 10 percent, it will be hard to avoid additional budget cuts. The start of fiscal year 2022 with expected revenue, less than current appropriation, and few balances in the budget would have to be cut. So the effects of COVID-19 will last for several years to come. The big question will be if Congress will provide general revenue aid to states in the coming years to help offset the revenue losses that are expected. There was an announcement yesterday that the September student count day will be delayed until December. The Indiana Association of Business Officials put out some clarification on this announcement that I would like to share. First, this delay is not a final solution to the issue. The issue is not the desire to distribute 100% of the appropriation for state tuition support in this fiscal year to school corporations. From all indications, the governor, House Republicans, and Senate Republicans are all in agreement to distribute the full funding. The issue that has recently been brought up is the language and statute dealing with the school distribution formula and the funding for virtual students. The delay does not call for a solution to that issue. This is a legislative issue that will be debated when the 2021 session begins. So there is still work to be done to deal with that real issue. Okay. We're moving forward to And I believe that John you may have an update for the park. Park or the uh, pickleball tournament has been put on hold because of complications, not necessarily COVID, but uh, the people that were run it are in town. So we're working on a new day. Um, and then just to remind you, you sports are happening. Hot corner is happening. I don't know sign up dates or anything. We can find that on the internet, I'm sure. But there's going to be leadership in Hot Corner um, in terms of baseball starting for season. So, no report. Yeah. Okay, board. Uh, we don't have the opportunity to move through the items 3.1 through 3.7 in the consent agenda. And I make a motion to accept the consent agenda. And uh, can I get a second motion? Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, motion carries. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, other business here. Resolution, uh, this is 4.1, resolution of the it is the transfer from education fund to operations fund. And Megan, I'm going to give this over to you. Um, this is the regular, month, regular monthly transfer uh, from the 15% um, from education to operations fund. Board, uh, motion to accept this resolution. Resolution number 
693, sale of personal property. Uh, at this time, I'm looking for a motion to table this particular resolution. Can I get a motion? Yes, um, Mr. Lieber asked me to read this um, to the 
everybody to share with you. For the past year or so, with all the decisions about school closing, reconfigurations of classes, and the COVID pandemic, I have held on to the school board position and have done my best to make the best decision for the kids in our district. There have been dark thoughts, 25 plus meetings in person and virtually with a licensed therapist, pastor intervention, and talked with Cindy about my mental health. With hearing about school at home every night and never getting the chance to have a break for school items, angry parents, social media diatribe, diatribe, and the tough decisions that are forthcoming that no one can ever have envisioned. I choose to be selfish for once and save my life. You always hear about kids and mental health issues, but adults have these issues as well on larger scale. Most times, a person takes their life and it's too late. I love Griffin, the schools, admins, teachers, support staff, and the kids, as well as volunteering. But living with a teacher and having disagreements about school items is not good for my marriage as well. I also choose my family and marriage. Many people voted me in because of my character and sense of fairness. And I'm not taking the easy way out, but rather opposite, making a strong decision and stating that I can no longer function for the best of the school corporation in school. Regards, Rich Weaver. Board members? John, John, did either of you want to say anything to your board members? Yeah. yeah, we are, we're only, unfortunately, past that, which is something we'll ever, since we can take a vote on it, I'm sure we will all be opposed. We wish Rich the best. It's good now. I mean, you will all see him on the bottom of the He gives a lot. Thank you very much. Well, we don't, we don't get the vote on it. But Short, Rich, you're my man. All right, he's my, he's my guy. I'll see, see Rich a lot. He's good. He's well. I'll see him. Um, he's one of the uh, bravest people I know. Okay, so um, all in favor of that one? Aye. Aaron? Okay, at this time, we open this up to audience participation uh, for agenda items only. So if you have desire to speak, we'll limit it to three minutes and we ask that it's cordial. Um, yes, sir. Okay. Regarding the 600 students that have not signed up to attend your school, are those 600 are those children students that have been here previously for years past? I mean, I know of course that I haven't heard any of my stuff. Been here for 10 years now. I have to call the first information is that how to keep residents from other areas coming into Griffith. Children that have been here in previous years were still on to check on that. that they were doing another on top of that is I found myself on the line keeping an education code for the email to the system. And if you ask for a social security number, I have to be a volunteer system so I can pass that. No, that's required by the Department of Workforce, Indiana Department of Workforce for any middle school and high school student. Yeah. We have to report those. No, it's not a law. Yeah. yeah, it is. They track them. Public school. Public school. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. It looks like. Um, I can ask someone to make a motion to adjourn this. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Just caught up in everything here. Um, anything uh, for the good of the corporation? No? 
Okay, our next um, regular board meeting is going to be September 10th, 6 p.m. I would say the LGI room, but it would be great to see this room filled. Teachers and parents, so we welcome you back. And can I get a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. Regarding board meetings, I think it's important to make sure that the board meeting is going to be held on the same day as the board meeting. And I think that we should be able to make sure that the board meeting is going to be held on the same day as the board meeting. Oh, yes, sir. That is not on the agenda. Item. Oh. But you can, you can refer to, yeah, you can email. Yeah, okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, this meeting is adjourned.